If I were to ask you, how many famous people do you follow on Instagram? What would your answer be? 10, 20, maybe even more. There is actually nothing wrong with enjoying the glamorous lives of celebrities as they travel to luxurious destinations, wear designer clothes, dine at fancy restaurants, and attend high profile events. After all, their lives often serve as an inspiration for almost all of us. They are undeniably some of the most influential figures of our lifetime however having such a very large following also comes with an implied responsibility to engage in conversations and also raise awareness about important social and economic issues that affect people worldwide one such issue is the ongoing conflict that is happening in the middle east but before we delve into that let me just introduce myself hi my name is joel and thank you so much for stopping by my channel on this channel i actually give commentary and i speak about anything i just want to speak about whether they are trendy or not and if commentary or video essays is your cup of tea if something you love kindly subscribe to my channel like this video and share if you care thank you guys so much for the love on my last video honestly it really does mean the world to me and that being said let's get into this video but before we actually get into this video i have this amazing self-improvement journal that has completely transformed my life actually i'm the creator of this journal it includes prompts like self-reflection gratitude feelings journal law of attraction brain dump weekly reflection shadow work prompt and also guided dream prompts and if you're on a journey of self-development and self-improvement and you need an extra thing to aid you on your journey the link is in my description box or in my about section you could click there and support me by purchasing the journal if not it's totally fine watching this video is also a way of you supporting me too but that being said i have decided that every video from now on hopefully i remember because a girl forgets a lot of things i'm going to be reading one inspirational quote from this journal so that being said i'm just going to do like a bingo and just get our word for today today's quote is in the symphony of life every note no matter how soft adds to the melody and that being said let's continue okay before we get right into this video one last thing i totally forgot so if you guys remember in my last video i spoke about my race racist housemate and i actually do have an update on my racist housemate literally it kind of got worse so if it's something you want to know about as usual it's going to be at the last part of this video because i don't like to talk about all this things at the beginning of the video so it's going to be at the ending of this video after i finish talking then we will talk about it first of all i just want to say thank you for everyone that's concerned in the ending of the video i'm going to go deep i'm going to go more into it so now for real back to the video so i'm going to start this video by talking about the origin of celebrity Celebrities. celebrities aren't a new phenomenon they've been part of human history from time and their journey has been quite very interesting so let's just go back to ancient times when rulers like pharaohs they were seen as gods and during this time people just went all out and they built like massive statues for is this statue or statutes they built like massive statues for these kings and they also told stories about them which made them incredibly famous for example cleopatra she is like a celebrity some people say she's black some people say she's white nobody really has a definite description of her race or if she actually she existed but if you're if you understand what i'm trying to say nobody actually really had like a definite description of the person she really was but she's a celebrity she's still being celebrated like the other time netflix actually even had a documentary or a short film or a limited series about her so literally celebrities they've been in the world from time then being a celebrity meant being exceptional at something or achieving something that was very remarkable amongst others so whether it was in the arts category or maybe sports or maybe just something like intellectual like even mathematics like pythagoras theory like literally pythagoras he's dead nobody even knows how he looked like except to go on google but when they say something like pythagoras theory like literally he has a theory name after him so those who stood out during those times they were celebrated like stars in the community so now let's fast forward to the renaissance period so here the renaissance period we have artists like leonardo da vinci or michelangelo who were the epitome of celebrity status like they were seen as cool here they actually created like breathtaking paintings and sculptures that everyone just admired and talked about even till now and people just talked about them so much 
much and then just like we have our favorite celebrities now they were the favorite celebrities of that time then came to the 20th century and everything just changed for example now there was a rise of movies there was a rise of radio and suddenly we had actors like charlie chaplin and we had singers like Elvis presley who were just everywhere and everyone knew their names everyone admired them like they were the face of everything during those times it actually felt like attaining that level of celebrity or that level of status was very very hard to reach so now in the age of social media and the internet fame is just within reach for anyone like anybody can be famous be it youtubers be it instagrammers be it tiktokers regular people can just become so popular online for example the girl who was in her car um i've forgotten her name -na 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 -na. she literally just did a selfie video and before we know it's like she has like almost a billion views on tiktok people just wake up overnight and they are like literally famous and anybody can just be famous so now that everybody can be famous it doesn't look like it's something very hard for you to touch yeah it's hard for you to get viewers for people to be interested in you but compared to like the 19 o's o's or during the time of pharaoh now is within the reach of almost everybody than it was in the olden times but behind the fame the glamour celebrities they are just like us they are literally like everyone they have their ups they have their downs they laugh they cry and they also do mistakes i'm just giving a characteristic of celebrities don't come for me yet so the story of celebrities is just about like ordinary people who've done extraordinary things that at the end of the day it catches the attention of everybody in the world so now let's go to the difference between a celebrity and an influencer in today's world imagine that you are at a big party and there are two types of people there the first type of people are the celebrities and the second types of people were the influencers and they both stood out in the crowd but they got there in different ways and they acted a little differently celebrities they were like the big movie stars or like maybe the sports heroes the sports persons that you actually did see on television they were known for their talents they were known for like the way they acted or the way they sang and then celebrities they always often like had like agents or managers who actually helped them to look good in public and just to manage their affair and just make them look like they were untouchable and you might have seen them on magazine covers or like maybe they're walking the red carpet at fancy events and they were like literally like i said earlier they were like these people who everybody wanted to know and who people just thought that oh my god i don't see myself in this position on the other hand we have influencers who were more like your friends from social media they were just like regular people who got famous by sharing their lives online they might have posted about like fashion or about like cooking or fitness and people just really loved them for just being real and relatable but instead of them like having agents or having a PR team they often managed themselves and talked directly to their fans through like comment sections or messages like it's just like when YouTube came to being that first time that everybody was just uploading on YouTube and not giving a care about like the next person and even though people had like large following people were still interacting with the people that were following them or like with their supporters online they were like the neighbor next door who was very very good at like you know giving advice or like sharing funny stories so the difference between the two just came down to how they got famous and how they connected with the people that supported them or that supports them celebrities they got their start in traditional industries like music or movies while influencers they actually built their fame by being themselves on social media we all know how kim kardashian achieved her celebrity status yeah she was paris hilton's best friend and wardrobe designer but we know how she really really got that fame we know how Nicki minaj got her fame as a celebrity as an established rapper she literally started from soundcloud like literally celebrities they had to work their way up celebrities they might have seemed like a little more polished and glamorous while influencers are seen to be or were seen to be more down to earth and friendly so notice how i use past tense in my description about celebrities and influencers and that is because in today's world there is like a very bloodline between a celebrity and an influencer and that brings us to our next topic how has influencers impacted the landscape of fame and celebrity culture and the line between celebrities and influencers is getting like blurred is getting like fuzzy
fuzzy that's if it's not already like blurred or fuzzy because celebrities and influencers they are beginning to do similar things they both use social media a lot and sometimes like even most times they do the same thing they are also acting in movies they are promoting products like now you're seeing an actor promoting product being a brand influencer but before now it used to be the job of influencers like literally influencers when they started coming up they were actually looked down upon even till now influencers are looked down upon because people don't see influencing as a real job so they are like looked down upon but now we see celebrities trying to be influencers and influencers trying to be celebrities nowadays influencers no longer like talk directly to their audience or to their supporters because some of them just feel like they are too big for you some of them they have like their PR agents they have their marketing team that just helps to put them in and that I understand because sometimes it could just be a lot and some of them they decide to like talk to the person like face to face or like one on one because they just still want to have this connection with their supporters with social media everyone can just have their own fan base now and feel connected to like their favorite influencers or their favorite celebrities now in today's world how the line is blurred is that even though someone is an influencer or a celebrity they both shape how we see the world and what we buy so now that brings us to operation celebrity blockout or operation blockout or celebrity blockout or i just put the four words together operation celebrity blockout so celebrity culture has changed a lot lately now thanks to social media regular people called influencers can actually become famous and these influencers they often feel more relatable than traditional celebrities people are also starting to think differently about traditional celebrities now people can see through celebrities now and they see that the marketing and the image that is being built behind this celebrity people can now see how fake their lives are if that makes sense but i don't think that's really relevant to our topic today but i'm just like putting that in for you guys to understand the difference between celebrities and influencers okay let's see diddy now like you guys remember diddy before he was seen as a god people used to put diddy keisha woke up in the morning feeling like p diddy like literally people saw diddy as this person and people his fans the thing is i've never really been like into diddy but like there are people who really 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 love his life was like a movie literally i've been thinking if i should do a, a topic on diddy not really diddy mainly about cassie if that makes sense because i don't think i don't know I, if you want a topic around that genre just let me know put it down in the description box i think it's, i already started researching last year when cassie's lawsuit came out but it's a little bit triggering so i had to let that go but i'll go back to my notes and continue researching because a lot has come out from that but that being said let's just go back to the topic at hand overall celebrity culture some people may think that celebrity culture is disappearing but celebrity culture is actually not disappearing it is actually changing recently at the Met Gala there wasn't much talk about the big issues that are going on in the Middle East but now online there is a movement called the Blockout 2024 that are targeting celebrities and influencers literally targeting famous people who aren't speaking up about important things like what is going on in the Middle East you can't tell me you don't know what's going on in the Middle East literally on my notes I actually wrote the country but I was like researching and everybody was just censoring it and then I actually googled it and literally yeah these people are trying so hard to silence us but we all know what I'm talking about I mean while protests over what was going on in the Middle East were happening like literally nearby to where the Met Gala held the Met Gala did not feature any like political statement on the red carpet and at that point at first nobody like really said anything because obviously we all know the Met Gala people go there to like you know show show off their clothes show off their designer and this was kind of expected but some people think it was unexpected but honestly you should not be surprised by I don't know why people are surprised by the life of celebrities if that makes sense you should not be surprised I don't know things don't take me by surprise but to me that wasn't expected like I didn't expect celebrities to go out there and be like oh free you know what I mean and this was expected for me anyways because obviously we all know how celebrities to some extent are very very selfish and they like guard their assets and guard their literally they worship the higher ups if you know what I mean and obviously the higher ups are the ones that are supporting the opposition team so this year the tickets at the Met Gala was priced at $75,000 per person yo $75,000 per person however less than two weeks later there was like this rapid growing online protest that started emerging 
growing especially on platforms like tiktok which was also a sponsor at the met gala how did this start so this whole protest started on the 6th of may when Haley kalio i don't know if you guys know Haley kalio i'm sure you guys know Haley kalio Haley kalio she was a host on e so e actually invited her to host the red not really the red carpet but the pre-red carpet according to her and she posted this video on tiktok let them eat cake so in this video she actually put on a really fancy old timely floral dress and a big headpiece and she played a scene from a movie called Marie Antoinette and in that scene there's this actress her name is Kristen Dunst and she said let them eat cake First of all, it's pretty surprising how much talk one video can create, honest. So before we go on, let's just do a little bit on Hailey Bailey. Her name is Hailey Kaleo Bailey. So this, this was funny. I think like, was it two months or one month ago? I think like two months ago, I was on the bus and I think she was also on a red carpet for the VMAs. Was it the VMAs? There was an event that happened before this month gala. And she was just posting her, just admiring the other celebrities that came for the red carpet. I'm following her on instagram actually i'm following her i've been following her because i saw one of her jokes and I actually i think i followed her last year and i was like oh and then i was talking her then i just followed her so i myself i decided to like google her like guys i research everything like if you tell me something i'm not sure i just research it in front of you like i'm someone who googles everything because i have a very inquisitive mind so i googled her her background she is actually a very intelligent person first of all with that in mind she's a very intelligent person she lived in somewhere like the suburbs her parents and then i think she moved to new york for a modeling career was it for a modeling career i can't really remember but she was a model for a sports magazine at one point in time and then i think accidentally and then she was invited for a uh, for a red carpet event she was invited for a red carpet event then accidentally or not take it with a grain of salt because what i read that i'm trying to remember like two months ago and then she started making content and she started gaining appearance or presence on social media and that's how she literally built her fan base so that's just a little background on her she's not a problematic person she's prior to this she's not been a problematic person she just posts her content also she is also married to a sports person then i could swear that i saw an article that said that she was married to this sports person and then they divorced the last two years but i was watching a video today and the person said she's married to the sports person an nfl player whose name is Kalio. so i don't know i don't know i didn't i didn't bother going back to read about her biography if i'm being honest because that's that's not what i'm focusing on right now but that's just what from the top of my head i can remember researching about her like around two months ago when i was very inquisitive about her i'm sure you've been wondering like okay she said all these things so why is everybody angry so literally people are angry because this video was seen as being insensitive because of the times that we're in right now like literally there's a whole whatever going on in the middle east and someone is like let them eat cake don't worry we're going to get to that so some people if even also compared the fancy outfit and the way people were dressed at the Met Gala to a scene from the Hunger Games where rich people will have a very great time while poor people were struggling. Guys, let me tell you guys something. I personally, I have never watched the Hunger Games. I never knew what it was all about. So like when people were comparing, I was so confused. But my girlfriend, she's watched all seasons of Hunger Games and apparently her best friend actually even gave her like a whole poster about Hunger Games. So we'll get to that. So so honestly before now i actually didn't even know the correlation i didn't even know who marie antoinette is i didn't even know anything about the hunger games i was so confused because if i scrolled and i'd seen her say let them eat cake i wouldn't even have thought about anything but then i think this is why the us are trying to censor tiktok because i feel like tiktok just makes us learn a lot of things because if there was no tiktok or if there was no like community like tiktok or an app like tiktok or instagram instagram doesn't even do that much but like especially tiktok if there was no tiktok i promise you i wouldn't have even known how insensitive this was and so this line was said to be said by marie antoinette so who was marie antoinette marie antoinette she was a queen in france and during that time france they were going through an economic hardship and when they came to and they were like oh allegedly actually allegedly so when the people came to and they were like see people are starving people are basically hungry and there is no bread allegedly she said let them eat cake some sources actually said she didn't say this but anyway she was actually 
actually executed why was she executed she was executed because she was seen to be conspiring with other people and they executed her but shortly before she was executed she was told that she committed incest but guys i have a screenshot of that on my phone so i'm just going to read that quickly because so with the prosecution's case faltering habit decided it was time to review her charge of incest at this accusation the queen's composure dropped she asked did you witness it but habit habit was literally her executor habit did not comment any further why was she executed so she was executed because she conspired with foreign powers to depict the state's treasury and she also committed high treason by acting against the security of the french state for a lot of people seeing people at the met gala despite what is going on in the middle east a lot of people just saw this as being wrong because of everything that's going on in the middle east we know that the met gala happens every year and even if there was a met gala at least if there was like a statement like even if it was like a sign you know how bloom nutrition you know how they advertise their influencers advertise their products yeah if there was like you know a subtle advertisement of what's going on in the middle east even if it was like a flag like literally that would have been so commendable so people together they put up clips from the met gala and from the middle east to just show how different things are so i talked about this with my girlfriend and before because i didn't know how much it related to the met gala so this is what she had to say how does this correlate with the hunger games well in the world of the hunger games you have the elite they go out they flaunt their like their wealth their clothes all the while in the backdrop of their world you have people like dying of poverty like not really killing each other but like their world isn't like how they how they portray it you get it? so the elite have their own world where like they're so like closed off to like the real events of the world of the games but the elite are the ones who like control the world they're basically at the top mm. the real life's events don't really affect them because they're just like in their own world, world. Mm. okay you get it yeah that makes sense so the hunger games almost like in the hunger games right the elite well the president he's basically like the president of their world mm -hmm. he goes around and then he uh, in in the poor areas he basically like chooses like so i think there's 12 districts there's districts so basically he'll go around and he'll basically like choose like poor people and almost like give give them a chance to like compete in the hunger games where they basically have to like fight to like kill each other there's there, there's 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 like an end goal and then obviously the whole point of the game is that only like one person wins but in this case it was two people just like squid game and that doesn't happen yet and like i don't I haven't watched that but like that doesn't happen like two people cannot win the hunger games it's one person but obviously their world is sort of like built like that no only like one person can win but like they basically like flip the whole game and said no we both won kind of thing and then they almost like leave their like poor background and then they become part of the elite so i feel like the only way to really like become part of the elite is to unless you're born into that is to sort of compete in the hunger games and to win okay so like in the case of hayley is because she was known to be like an influencer now. I just think that her comment was a bit tone deaf in light of what's going on in the world. Mm. You get it? Is there a chance that like maybe she didn't know the genesis? Of... Everyone knows what's going on. No, no, no. Like when she used the sound. Like, oh, I, thought it came out of her, I thought it came out of her mouth. No, no, no. So she used the... No, yeah, but there's a lot of sounds to choose from. True. my mind like I, I didn't even know that sound existed me like, too what would have made you to do you know what i'm saying so like you did it for a reason and it worked yeah everyone's mother has you get it's just tone deaf it's like any other time cool but like right now come on it's also from a movie that was made about the marie antoinette who is, so who is that she was like a french monarch or something mm. and she was executed actually damn so i was reading about her so she was educated some people said she was educated because she said this but actually she was educated for like different other reasons she conspired for greedy reasons reasons yeah she conspired for greedy reasons but some people said that she, um, she was also educated because she said let them eat cake but that's also alleged there's this tiktok creator her name is lady from the outside and she got people even more fired up because she brought about Haley khalil's video and she actually said brought the origin and said this this has to stop this has to stop so literally people actually do have their block list which i'm going to read for you so the block list that people have created some people that i've seen online so the block one is the first one is the rock and opera let me not even go into the story of the 
rock and opera so we all know i don't know if you guys know about the controversy around the rock and opera we know that opera is a billionaire and the rock there was a time he was the highest paid actor in the world if i'm not mistaken in that in the world or the usa he was among the highest paid but i think that he was actually the highest paid actor for someone who was a wrestler before just came into the acting industry and just overtook it anyways that being said the time there was a time the rock and opera came together to seek for the, they actually created like a fundraiser i don't know if they created it but they were speaking about a fundraiser and this was during the pandemic when normal people were losing their jobs if that makes sense like people were losing their jobs while celebrities they had to like stay in their fancy house and literally be bored while us we were struggling like i if i was not working in amazon i would have lost my job so literally these people opera and the rock they came they were seeking for us the normal people literally the normal people to aid their fundraiser in Maui and these are two billionaires or maybe a billionaire and a millionaire asking the masses to also help in donating let's not forget that the rock has properties in Maui he actually has properties in Maui and honestly people were people were outraged as they should honestly people were outraged as they should so I'm not be surprised that their name is like the first name here so the people that people want to be blocked is the rock opera arena grande kim kardashian chloe kendall courtney caitlin chris vogue e-news kelvin hart serena gomez sam smith daily mail mark hamill i don't even know who that is amy Shmuna, lana del rey gal gadot jojo siwa chris olsen Katie bailey mtv tmz doja <laughs> sorry i love that doja cut because Ah, uh, okay. Doja Cat, Chris Hemsworth, Netflix, J Lo, Lizzo. Speaking about Lizzo, when her name appeared on the list, she actually created a video promoting what was going on in the Middle East. But people were like, if we didn't call you out, you wouldn't have spoken up. So just shut up and sit down. Lizzo said that celebrities had no power to do anything until she cracked open the phone, looked up Instagram, and noticed the block out 2024. Then she had a that's a raven vision about the towers of her luxury, relevancy, and money falling to the ground. So then she called Shazam and dig deep into her ass and pulled out the power that she claimed she never had. So yeah, I don't know what you guys are going to do about that, but yeah. Justin Bieber, Megan Trainor. I haven't seen Megan Trainor in a long time. This is actually my first time actually even reading this whole list. Um, Hailey Bieber, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Tom Brady, and Rihanna. So speaking about Rihanna, there is like a screenshot that I actually got from a comment section of a video of someone actually speaking about this. And this is what the person said. Rihanna just launched some new shoes with puma who are on the boycott list and she's a billionaire who brags about it she's always quiet on social issues she should go first block her i'm not gonna lie i never noticed that i never noticed that because obviously we all know rihanna to be like a philanthropist a humanitarian she is the first person one of the first people to bring a whole wide range of foundations for people with darker skin we've seen her in pictures going to third world countries and helping people and honestly that also reminds me her company Savage X Fenty is also under LVMH and those people are pro-Israelis and she's under them even Puma too but like she doesn't seem to catch more cheat as other celebrities do obviously Rihanna has not caught so much strays if I'm being honest like when this person said this I was like that is actually true I know about the LVMH thing where but people when they are bringing up brands that people should boycott they never bring up Fenty so now let's Let's talk about the similarities between the Hunger Games, the Met Gala, and what is going on in the Middle East. The first one is ignoring real issues. The Met Gala's focus on luxury and fashion might also distract people from important issues or important problems like what is going on in the Middle East. And instead of celebrities or instead of even the Met Gala themselves to like use their influence to help some celebrities, they actually just seem more interested in showing off. And honestly like when i think about it i'm like there are actually politicians and celebrities who are also like sitting down and supporting people dying okay let's take people out of out of it children dying you're seeing pictures and videos of kids dying if that makes sense and obviously social media has played a very huge part on making this war actually come to light because this war has been happening from time from time and i'm very 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 happy 
that the youth, the people of our world, like the children, the, our generation is literally opening our eyes. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The older people, because they are so glued to traditional television and traditional television actually tells people bullshit and lies. The older people, they actually support Israel. Honestly, it's what I have seen and experienced. I had to like literally explain to an older person why that was not the right thing to do. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I had to literally explain, especially when it comes to Nigerian Christians. I'm being very honest because obviously we are seen as the children of Israel according to the Bible, but elderly Nigerian Christians, they actually not realize that the Israel of us is different from the Israel of the Middle East, if that makes sense. So now let's go to the second point, wasting resources. The money and the attention that is being spent on the Met Gala could be better used to like help people in what is going on in the Middle East. I can remember when this happened earlier, Bella Hadid, I can remember how she, I think she actually really, really did fight for the people in the Middle East. She was very vocal about it and I think she was dropped or something like that. There was the whole controversy. Please you guys, I'm not sure but I think so. Please remind me if that, if I'm being honest. Please just tell me in the comment section because sometimes my brain just scrambles. Anyways, she was very, very vocal about it. She was really, really making sure that everybody was like the whole situation was being handled and she didn't have that much, that much support from people in her industry. And uh, honestly, like I said, the money and the attention that is being spent on the Met Gala could be better used to help people in the Middle East. And it's just like spending a lot of money on a party while ignoring the neighbor who actually needs help. I obviously, us, the masses, we actually don't even have that much power to actually like speak up. Like from time to time, I post on my stories to create more awareness. I can remember one of my last videos, I actually spoke about it. On my Instagram bio, I have the link for support for the people in Congo because Congo is a whole different issue and it's so sad that Congo is not getting even as much recognition. Meanwhile, even the phone I'm holding is as a result of children that are being put into forced labor in Congo. It is really, really sad. It is sad the more I think about it, but the way the system has made it look like is that you can't even survive if you stay away from all these things. When I say you can't survive when you stay away from all these things, I mean like literally like phone is very essential. So if you say, oh, I'm going to boycott Apple, I'm going to boycott Samsung. How are you going to call the next person? Do you understand? Another thing, another point you should take from this is making inequality worse. The Met Gala actually shows up how rich and famous people can be while many people in the Middle East, they struggle with poverty and with violence. And this can also make inequality seem normal and make it harder to solve big problems like war and poverty. You guys, I just remember something. I can remember, can you remember that for there to be a ceasefire, the people in the G8 countries, I don't know if you guys know what the G8 countries are. The G8 countries are seen to be like the most powerful countries in the world, like the first world countries. So the people in the G8 countries, like America, had to have a meeting to decide if Israel should cease fire on those other people. Yo, that is scary. That These are real people. The next point I would like to bring up is forgetting real people. The media pays a lot of attention to the Met Gala, but sometimes it forgets about the real problems that real people are facing. And this can make it seem like celebrity parties are more important than helping others. Another point I should mention is getting our priorities wrong. Instead of focusing on things that matter, like peace and also helping those in need, the Met Gala makes us care more about fancy clothes and famous people and it's literally like losing sight of what is real important. So now, what do protesters want? The movement consists of people who support. I feel so sad that I even have to censor this country. I feel so sad I have to censor this country. Like, I'm like, really? I have to censor this country? Really? There are people who've gotten their account banned because of mentioning this country. For some reason, I feel like censorship is one of the wicked things that's actually happened to mankind because of things like this. Can you imagine? Anyways, the movement consists of supporters of this country that I'm talking about. And these supporters, they're actually monitoring the responses of celebrities to the conflict. And if these celebrities haven't spoken out or like maybe taken sufficient action, the movement also urges supporters to block them on social media. I'm sure you would ask, what does sufficient action mean? Sufficient action does not mean that you have to fly over there and participate in war. Little things like maybe speaking about it on social media or calling for a ceasefire, donating to charities or like maybe making public statements. Anyone could do that. Like if you just do the bare minimum, I'm sure people are going to like support. They'll be like, yes, yes, yes. Just do the bare minimum. Like the even if you put the flag like 
like beside you there's this video that i actually saw of kim and north when people were just flagged everywhere and north asked was like oh what's that why are people saying free and like literally kim was like oh yeah that's the flag of what country did she say is it of is it brazil but it wasn't but i was reading the comment where like yeah she's trying to protect her child from what is going on and things like that and that i cannot argue because everybody has different ways in which they want to bring up their children what is that flag? That's Brazil. That's where CDC Neymar. Because we, we're talking about all the soccer stuff. But now people will be asking what is the point of blocking celebrities i'm not gonna lie i have my two cents about it too why i can't okay i'm getting ahead of myself anyways blockout supporters actually says that blocking is very important because companies actually check how many followers or how many likes an influencer or like maybe celebrity has before they actually do hire them to advertise their products and when you block somebody on social media you just don't see their post any longer and you get to control whose page or whose account you see or who's supposed to see so blocking people can actually have a very bigger impact than just unfollowing them so if you block a celebrity you would not see anything from them at all but if you unfollow them obviously now they are suggested post instagram will try to push them into your life again so you, there's most likely a probability that you're going to see them and because companies actually use this data to view the engagement of these celebrities so if they see that they don't have that much followers or if you don't like their post or comment or support their post they there will be a huge chance that they would not know there'll be like a little chance or a huge chance that they may not get this deal but then again kim kardashian has like over almost 400 million followers and just four people unfollowed her she'll still get the brand deal i promise you let's go back to Haley. i didn't really speak much about her apology video i'm not gonna lie it was very long guys i don't understand why everybody's mad i didn't do anything wrong let me explain oh hang on let me turn the camera so you can't see my penthouse Okay, so I'm literally just like a normal person. I'm one of you, I swear. I, I didn't even get invited to the Met Gala. That's the only thing I wanted in the whole wide world and I didn't even get invited. I just had to stand outside. Look at all these other people that use that TikTok sound. Why are you attacking them? Why are you only attacking me? I have a lot of really rich and famous friends and so I didn't even pay for my gown that probably cost thousands and thousands of dollars. I got it for free, you know? I don't understand why everybody's mad at me when I'm literally just like you. I am so privileged that I have not paid attention to anything that's going on in the world. And to be honest, I like don't care. I can't talk about something that I don't know anything about because I've been so unbelievably ignorant that I've scrolled past every single thing that tried to inform me. All I do is sit around in my big mansion and steal content from other creators. Like, why would you want me to talk about politics? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And there's this other page that I was listening to, this YouTube commentary that I was listening to about. It just focused mainly about Hailey, Hailey Khalil. It just focused mainly about her. So I'm going to link it in my description box. So if you'd want to watch the whole commentary, you can watch it after you watch this. But like, her apology aside, I still believe that there is more to discuss regarding the blackout and her original video honestly i personally don't come for me but i actually do not think that the blackout would have that much lasting impact hear me out so normally when it comes to like movement or when it comes to protests they actually always have a clear goal when it comes to the protest of what's going on in the middle is the clear goal is to cease fire and to make sure that everything goes back to normal when it came to the civil rights movement it was for the black people and slaves to be free like literally there's always a clear goal but when it comes to this everything just seems scattered people are just adding names for various reasons there was a girl on tiktok that i said she was speaking about it she was like yeah you guys want to cancel this you guys are saying you want to cancel people at the Met gala you people are saying you want to cancel this person because they don't speak up but you're adding this person's name why are you adding this people's this person's name i feel like some people are just adding people's name to blog because either maybe they don't like the person or maybe they think that this person's earning more even though these people may have like spoken about what's going on in the middle east but because you don't have a good vendetta with the person you're urging other people to block them so everybody's goal is just so scattered and people are just adding names for various reasons so while this began as a discussion about elite people in the society it is also now about unrelated issues like i said some people are just blocking the celebrities just because you don't like them even though they're doing everything right by the book and there's even someone that said that most of people's most of people's block list is just filled with black people y'all need to pack these celebrity block list up by tomorrow
go ahead, finish what you're doing and pack it up because they're getting ridiculous. Not only are they completely disorganized with the end goals and intention varying almost from person to person, which like, cool, do you, you have your own motives, but as a movement, not very successful, but also y'all are doing no research on the people that you're putting on these lists. Like Alan Rickman was on somebody's list. Why? He's dead. And even if he wasn't, even if you're going after like the Palestine angle, he made a whole play about Rachel Corey. If your goal is to make a block list to block celebrities who aren't using their voice to speak up about the issues going on in the world, why is Quana Rose Chasing Horse on your list? Why is Bad Bunny there? Why? Oh no, my list isn't about Palestine. My list is about the Met. My list is about dismantling celebrity culture and extravagant displays of wealth. Okay, why is Iowa Debris on your list but not Anna Wintour? not Vogue, not any of the designers that, you know, the big labels that paid to have these celebrities here. And it's not skating past me that no matter which way you slice it, there are a ton of incredibly wealthy Zionists that aren't clocking y'all's list, but a whole lot of people of color are, a whole lot. And like I said, y'all are independent people of free will, you block who you like, but as a movement, pack it up. I get it together or pack it up so like obviously this thing is not like as direct as it should be if that makes sense so when it comes to like civil rights or like feminism goals were clear women were fighting for women to be able to vote women were fighting for women to have ownership of their body but this one is just everywhere the goals are actually not clear and it feels more as a trend that trust me in two weeks is going to be forgotten about in two weeks kim kardashian is going to drop a new product and it to sell out in the next minute and as for Hailey's original video, it is very ironically amusing that she didn't actually anticipate the backlash. She was actually kind of dressing to look like Marie Antoinette and it is and the sound she got was from the movie. So if you really watch the movie and if the movie actually inspired you, you would know why. And then again, not even about that, it's about the event you went to. You dressed like the person that's associated with the quotes and the place you went to. I know she came out and gave like an apology video saying that she's like all of us she's like all of us her apartment is seventeen thousand pounds a month seventeen thousand pounds a month like a month she brings out seventeen thousand pounds in new york city to pay her landlord and she's like all of us she's not like me seventeen thousand pounds a month the average person on the street would not be invited for that she's an elite but she's not an elite among the elite people like among the celebrities her elitism has actually not reached that level but compared to us normal us she's an elite and it's nothing that you should be mad about like you should not be mad that your status is bigger than the next person you sh it's not something you should be mad or you should be ashamed or you should try to bring yourself down no everybody works for where they are some people just got it by luck like literally if i have a million subscribers i personally i will know that i worked for it because i've been on youtube for a long long time a long time this is not my first channel let me tell you guys so if i get a million subscribers i know that i worked for it and like day and night like those around me know but now while i understand the anger towards the celebrities what of the politicians they have the ultimate power in all of this i don't really see people go to the politicians if i'm being honest donald trump will come and say this and that there'll be no protests or anything people will just talk about it and just move on compared to celebrities i understand celebrities too they are like an advocate but at the end of the day it all falls on politicians and that i'm not taking away anything i said about the celebrities because celebrities is to they have their role to pay if a normal human being or if a normal person can put a flag or like post their story about what is going on a celebrity too can do that when it comes to what is going on i think this guy he has said everything that i have to say when it comes to the anger towards the politicians to the people of this app who are doing the celebrity block trend where we're just straight up blocking these out of touch with reality celebrities i commend you because listen if there's anything that i'm good at it's being a professional hater so if you're telling me that the move is to block celebrities who can afford $75,000 a ticket to the Met Gala while the rest of us are out here trying to keep our heads above water, I'm all for it. Let's take down District 1. You have my vote. I do have one question though. Why is it that we can't take this same energy and put it towards people like politicians or greedy CEOs? Why is it that the only time that people can band together is when it's trendy to do so on TikTok? Like this whole celebrity blockout thing is a wonderful idea. Stop giving them views and attention and their revenue stream 
machines will go down. It's a brilliant idea. But what about the ding-dongs in Washington who pass bills in the middle of the night that only benefit their geriatric dinosaur wallets? Could we not all get together and do something even crazier? Like, I don't know, maybe refuse to pay taxes or maybe we pick a month where nobody spends a single dollar on a mega corporation who rakes in billions of dollars a year, but their own employees can't even afford rent. I just wish we took this same energy that we have on TikTok to block celebrities or annoying influencers, but not the people who have actual impact on our day-to-day -day lives. Think about it. There was a girl on this app, Hope, I believe her name was, who made an insensitive comment about not wanting to date a guy simply because he was a guy that worked at a pizza place. And the entire internet came for this woman like a storm. Not saying she didn't deserve it, but what I am saying is when our political leaders say something stupid, or when these greedy CEOs do something stupid or say something stupid, we really don't do anything about it except talk about it. So look, I'm all for this celebrity block trend. Let's make us regular folks the celebrities, okay? Let's block them and give us some of that money so that we can better our lives. But at the same time, let's start coming up with some actions to band together to block the people who have actual influence on our lives. The people who have been doing a piss poor job at it. Because I'll tell you what, if I have to continue paying $4 for a single hash brown at McDonald's, I'm going to start swinging. Conclusion. In the ever evolving landscape of fame and celebrity culture, the rise of influencers and the impact of social media has reshaped the way we perceive and interact with public figures. The blockout movement exemplifies a trend that is growing where individuals hold celebrities accountable for their actions, particularly in addressing pressing social and political issues. As society becomes more interconnected through digital platforms, the power dynamics between celebrities, influencers, and their supporters or their audiences actually continues to shift. The blockout movement also serves as a reminder of the potential influence wielded by everyday individuals in shaping the discourse that surrounds celebrity culture and social responsibility. As we navigate these changes, it remains very essential for both public figures and their audiences to critically engage with the role of fame in promoting social change and also awareness. So now, that being said, let's get into the story with my housemates. I wake up on Saturday and I'm like feeling so good. I feel I feel like good in my body and I'm like, you know what? Let me just go and do some shopping and cook and create content while I cook for my fitness page on Instagram. And that was the plan. So I go on Lidl. I'm looking like a snack. Like literally, I see myself and I'm like really, really proud of myself. And I'm coming back into my estate with what I buy and everything. So I'm walking into my estate and as I'm walking into the estate gate, I see my housemate. Like literally, what happened? If you guys know what happened, the racist housemate. As I'm walking in, I'm like facing. He's coming this way and I'm walking that way. And I'm facing the other way because the police told me was like, when you see him, don't interact with him or anything. And I'm facing the other way. And I'm facing the other way. I see you trying to talk to me. And this is me thinking that he wanted to apologize to me. Why did I think he wanted to apologize to me? I thought he wanted to apologize to me because when the police came and they asked my other housemate about what happened, my other housemate told me that he apologized to him. And I was like, he didn't apologize to me. And I was like, because I was like, why is he apologizing to you? Because it was me that it happened to. So why is he apologizing to you? So me, I told maybe he wanted to apologize to me because I am the person that he should have apologized to. But he's trying to talk to me and I take off my headphones and I'm like, what did you say? And he's like, keep trying. I'm like, huh? He was like, keep trying. I dare you, keep trying. Now the police are all over me. You guys, I was so scared. I just walked inside the room while he like walked out and inside the estate, like to the house while he was walking out of the estate. And I'm like trying to get myself together and everything. And I go on the lift and I go to my floor. And while I'm on the lift, like I'm typing to my estate agent because I'm like, now I'm telling them, I'm like, I have to leave this house. I told them I'm going legally and I'm actually going legally. So I may have to stop talking about what's going on so i told them i'm like i'm going legally because honestly i told them i was like you're actually my estate agent they're telling me that either i should pay for the remaining year two months in advance i should pay five percent for the remaining year to my contract ends or i should look for another replacement for this house i did not have to be punished for what another person is doing to me and i told them i was like still have to go legally so now they're telling me they want to relocate me to another another of their apartment but i don't want to be relocated because this agency they actually do not care like they don't me every complaint i've actually even made to them about this house like literally they've not done anything i'm a very anxious person so i sent them the email and i told them i'm like see i'm taking this legally i have to live here because i'm not going to 
be here any longer and i'm so scared you guys i'm so scared and obviously because he the housemate had left the estate i was like i called 101 because remember when i called 999 they said call 101 if it's not an emergency that happened at that point i called 101 and they're like if you want this check our website it was too long and as i'm on the door calling 101 i just broke down i just start crying like i'm crying i'm bawling my eyes out because now i felt so vulnerable the hairs in my body were standing i was having goosebumps i was genuinely scared i am still scared like my door is always locked i'm genuinely scared i'm so scared i'm not gonna lie and i go upstairs my other housemates that i'm close to he he's like i'm crying he asked me what happened and i told him. him he doesn't even talk to him at all like from the first day he just knew something was wrong with him so he asked me i told him what happened he was like call the police i was like i'm trying to call them he said call 999 so i called 999 and i'm speaking to the dispatch person like already from my phone number he could read my previous reports and everything and i'm so i'm like crying because at that point i felt so vulnerable i felt i was so scared i'm still scared but like i'm so scared i told my best friend she told me she was like you're leaving the house in two weeks weeks like two weeks is too long one of my friends she said you're even trying to negotiate and the thing is i'm going to leave this house like in two weeks so in case you guys don't see content for like one or two weeks in advance just know that i am trying to pack out i'm going to move out i cannot keep on staying here because i am a very anxious person in trying my best like literally i try my best to just make every day of my life count and have some positivity yeah i'm going to leave this house so in case you guys there's a period of time you guys don't save video from me just know that i'm trying to like change location and things like that so don't give up on me so yeah so that's literally what's going on so with the police obviously the police they said they could not come at that time because he was leaving the estate as i was going in so they've carried my case forward to the inspector that i was speaking to so the inspector that i spoke to he gave me his phone number his work phone number and his email and he did not pick up his phone number so the dispatch police told me to send him an email while he also sent him an email to us i sent him an email so this time if they asked me do you want us to arrest him please arrest him because yeah when i was thinking about it thank you guys so much for the people in the comment section that also said someone actually told me that she was disappointed that i actually you know arrest him but there are so many factors first of all he lives with me if he gets released on bail like i was just thinking i don't want anything to happen to me you guys so like literally there are so many things he lives with me the thing is when the police came at first i told them i was like can you arrest him after i've left the house not when i'm in the house like when i've packed my things and left and i don't and he doesn't know where i stay but they said it's not possible because they cannot schedule an arrest that's what they told me so obviously i was like okay i just want you guys to warn him understand all these things and then again i was thinking about his job but like now i don't even give a flipping fuck because that's who he is so he's not remorseful and i'm not going to joke with my life like that so that being said i'm sure the police are going to contact me tomorrow because tomorrow is monday so i'm sure the police either they'll contact me or they will come to my house and i don't work on mondays so if they come to my house on monday i'm going to tell them everything and whatever the police suggests they are going to do but i have to leave this house guys that's all i have for you guys with my housemate case and thank you guys so much if you're not subscribed kindly subscribe to my channel like this video and i can't wait to see you guys on my next video next week but thank you guys so much for the love i really do appreciate you guys until next time ciao